he decides, well, where do I want to go today? What do I want to do? And he's, well, he thinks this and that, you know. Maybe in, intuitively, instinctively, he's thinking about the temperature. Well, it's going to get hot, so i got to go to that shady spot that's cool I know about and hang out there. And uh, I feel like maybe, you know, visiting some of the nearby cats and having some company. You know, whatever the cats think. And so they do have a degree of imagination. But compared to the human imagination, it's nothing. It's a drop in the bucket. All the creatures are like that. You know, and we... If we didn't have this knowledge of good and evil and our ability to comprehend, to conceive of sin and guilt and shame and nakedness, all this stuff that all the other creatures are oblivious to, and then the money, you inject that and everything gets all screwed up, man. I mean, it's just, this is an, an evil entity that was invented by evil men to enslave what in their minds are lesser men. Do you understand? Because they know it's hard being human, just organically hard. They know it's tough. And they don't want to be just another rube out there. Okay, they want to be special. And so they appoint themselves as rulers over the lesser men. And the way they do that, the most effective, powerful tool they have is money. That's it. But it's God's planet where God's equally beloved children. Take it from there. If you were God, what would you do? Okay. Doesn't that mean as far as money goes, there's absolutely no need for money? Absolutely no need. If it's understood that you're born rich, unthinkably rich. Why? Because of all the, all the resources. They all belong to you as much as they do anybody else. You understand? That would be our whole new reality, our whole new paradigm. Absolutely no need for money. And once we had a taste of that, man, we won't want nothing to do with these people. And we could have that reality gradually, organically, naturally, automatically, if evil men would allow it. But they make damn sure they don't. So they keep screwing it up on purpose. Because the last thing they want to see happen is your money consistently however gradually go up in worth that's the worst case because they know where that would lead because money would become less and less relevant to us instead of more and more like they've manipulated our reality to do so my whole life jfk had to go he was an egalitarian look it up equalitarian he was a good american he believed in peace and prosperity not for some but for everyone why not if we can gradually have that reality and all of us be free, all of us be prosperous, why not have that reality? Safe and secure. You know, I was thinking about the uh, issue of crime and these school shootings and all this. You know what the, pro the problem is? We took God out of the schools. I've heard other people say this and thought, well, I don't know, you know, what about the parents? What's their responsibility? Well, the parents weren't taught God in school either. And what does King Solomon says? The the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You see, you want to you want to be held accountable. In your right mind, it's very important to be held accountable by a higher figure. Okay, not a regular human. Humans can't save our lives. No matter how noble, no matter how good and pious a human being is, they do not have the power to save your life. Not your parents, not your children, not your spouse, no human being, not your pastor, not anybody else. So this love that we have for God has to be far and away unique and special than that love because we can only show love to other human beings as much as we're reflecting our love toward God and convincing them, you want to believe, and here's why. And the best thing we can do in our lives, most valuable thing is win more friends for him. It's like winning treasure. It's like storing treasure in heaven. When you convince people that they should believe that they are precious, priceless, invaluable treasure to God, the souls of men, he wants their friendship. He wants their love of their own free will choice. 
It's your decision, a conscious, deliberate decision to love God above all else, to trust God above all else, to believe in God above all else and give our whole selves to God of our own free will and accord and say there's no place else I can trust and put myself and my life, no, nobody's hands I can trust. This is it, man. So it's an individual thing, and children need to be taught that in school from an early age to believe in God. We took the Pledge of Allegiance out. Screw up being allegiance to the nation is nothing. I mean, allegiance to humanity. That's what we ought to be doing a Pledge of Allegiance to. And then just say, you know, God, you know, we worship God above all else. That's a good line in the Pledge of Allegiance, right? You see, if we taught people to fear God, and you're on your own. We're going to be answerable individually. Your group think is out the window. We all tend to do that because we're a little bit tribalistic at heart. We like that, right? This I'm a member of this group or that group. And yeah, 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 rah, 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 the blues and the reds and whatever it might be. Because it goes on and on and on with the group think. So then we think, oh, that's good. I can relinquish my own responsibility here for my belief system and my values. My thinking, my attitude. No, we can't. You need to remember, you're going to answer on your own. We stand naked before God and give account. What is the basis for why we believe the way we do? And we're not going to be on the back of our minds and say, well, it was these people in this group or that group, you know, the way they thought and believed. And so I just, you know, went along with it because it was popular. Remember what Einstein said? I think it's a beautiful quote. What is popular may not always be right. Sometimes it may be. That's the problem with a democracy, right? It's a majority rule, right? That's, I mean, isn't that basically, I mean, if I understand democracy right, in a nutshell, it's a, democracy, it's a majority rule. It was, well, that's only proper. Let the majority people get their way. It's a vote. Yeah, duh. And then he said, uh, what, is, what is right may not always be popular. And it's as simple as that. So what does that tell us? we got to think for ourselves. That's it. Think for ourselves. We cannot point the finger at anybody else and say it's because they told me to believe this way or that did. They did. Do your own research. If you care about eternal life in paradise, do your own research. Realize what it's going to take you got to be of the mindset, same mindset of God. you got to be able to see through his eyes, okay, and understand what things really bug you. Money is at the top of that list. It must go. And that is the evil men's worst nightmare is that they, humanity should unite and get it and say, no, we demand that our currency steadily go up in worth. And the way that happens is by progress. And progress is defined by supply and demand. And our ability to oversupply. And that that is not music to the ears of a lot of no, they want to hear no, we want to regulate this thing. Like buying up all the diamonds. It doesn't matter how many investors you get in there. If they collude together, then you know, what's a monopoly? Who needs a monopoly when you know it's like when you got a bunch of investors that say, Yeah, let's buy up all the housing. And we control it. Forget supply and demand. Forget capitalism. Forget free market principles. No, no, we control it. We want to regulate it out. We want to tell you, well, there's a shortage because we're only releasing so much at a time. And we'll sell it when the price gets to where we want it. You understand how this works? We got you by the throat. Because it's typically essential human needs that they play this game with. You don't see electronics soaring in price, do you? Because it's trinkets and knickknacks. It's, we don't need them. They're not necessities. You, you get how this works? So they want us by the throat. They, that's their security. That's their safety. And they, that's, that secures their position and place in this world. If they control the money. You take And who's doing it? The top leaders. The uppermost echelons of power, then the Senate and the Congress, the executive, and then you got the Federal Reserve and them working together, colluding together against the best interest of regular people, regular Americans, regular humans. <coughs> Excuse me. 
You see how that works? So they've got to make damn sure that you don't get it and that we don't unite and say, no, we want to see one thing happen. Our money steadily and gradually go up in worth. That's it. That's what should happen. What's the purpose of finding easier and easier methods to produce all the stuff we want and need if it's not to take away our burden? That's why we want our lives easier, not harder and harder. We don't want more and more burden by our prices going up through the currency being debased as a result and worth less constantly. That's what they want. But they themselves, they, whoa, well, we've got to insulate ourselves from what we're doing, from, from the, the, the havoc we're wreaking on the economy, creating poverty, desperate poverty to the point of homelessness unnecessary, utterly unnecessary suffering and death while there's a glut of housing out there. But it's being controlled by a few and regulated out. So evil, man. So evil. You think that's God's with? There's one thing I know about God. God is fair. Okay? And he doesn't like imbalanced scales. Okay? Un unjust scales. Unjust scales. He doesn't like unfairness. And you should either. That should really strike a chord with your God-given nature of just saying, I, this is wrong. And by me tolerating other people to, to believe that way, that that's somehow okay to accept it, to tolerate this, you're wrong. No, no, no. You've got to be vociferous, man. It doesn't matter if you're one of those evil men. I mean, there's plenty of poor people that are evil just because they're covetous of the rich. And, you know, they've accepted their lot. You know, they've got their tail between their legs and they no, sorry there's nothing I can do it's too, they're too powerful well you know you'll explain why you chose to be a coward get a coward's reward but that's it I'm not afraid of these people you know I look up to guys like Martin Luther King getting shot and killed because of he was too powerful of a speaker and he his ability to unite the people and JFK for just saying hey I want to set the American people free I don't want to enslave them with these Federal Reserve notes owned by private entities and private groups of individuals. No, 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 no. You understand why they're so opposed to universal prosperity? It's not that we can't have that reality, and in short order, but it'd be traumatic. Oh, just think how traumatized that'd be for the rich. Oh, my God. Oh, my quality, equality. Oh, my God. It's the end of the world. Oh, oh, oh. Evil men would crap in their pants, man. It crap and depends because that's what the return of Christ signifies. And that's the promise that's prophesied in Scripture. And they see it. They see the writing large in neon flashing lights on the wall. And they're starting to crap their pants. They're getting a little squirrely because they know that we're not going to play stupid forever. That people are going to unite. We're going to figure it out. If we're born rich, there's no need for money figured out from there on out how it's going to work okay it won't be hard that reality is right around the corner but it seems like it's billions of miles away because it's such a huge departure from the current reality we're all forced to endure loathsome burdensome artificially brought on by evil men through the use of money that's it it's really that simple. All forms of money must go. What will heaven look like? There can't be any form of money there, and there won't be anybody there that wants any money. Because all it represents is having an advantage over others. And that, my friends, is being evil. That's stinking thinking. And that's often everywhere. Our next-door neighbors, I mean, you know, one's a blue, one's a red, right? One's a Democrat, one's a Republican, one's a conservative, one's a liberal. And we've got so much more in common than out of common. It's not funny. But yet, the evil men want us to focus on our differences so that we're divided in our local communities. That somehow, well, it's his fault. And my landlord's fault. He's raising my rent. You know, I hate him. And he's a Democrat. Or he's a Republican. And uh, rich Republicans, I hate them all. They're all evil. Oh, those stupid libtards. Oh, I can't stand them. They make me want to vomit. You know, this kind of, that's what they want. That's what so they want you to think it's like small-minded. Stay small-minded, short-sighted, and just endure. Let us keep raising your cost of living on stuff you can't get away from, energy needs like gasoline, heating, propane, that kind of stuff, natural gas, 
food, shelter, potable water. They got to make sure they've got us by the throat. And what better way than cause essential human needs to go up? Then we get scared. Everybody's scared. Everybody's fearful. Everybody's insecure, miserable, sucking lemons. Where does it end? Oh, my God. What am I going to do if my boss doesn't give me a raise? I mean, uh, you know, where, where, where's the next straw that's going to break 